Hi everyone, I'm Jim Classic, and you are watching Geekin' It. So, for today's toy review, I will not be reviewing one, or two, or even three. But no, I will be reviewing about six toys today. That's right, six toys. Because I will be reviewing the legendary Voltron. Voltron, Defender of the Universe, was a series I grew up with as a child. I was never totally 100% into it. As a kid, I was more into, like, you know, Transformers, Star Wars, Ghostbusters, He-Man, and Voltron was just kind of a side interest. I would watch it if it was on, I, but I just wasn't that into it, okay? This is where I'm coming from. However, when it did kind of come back in the 90s on Cartoon Network, and when I see it on TV or Netflix or, or whatever, whatever it's on right now, because I know I don't own it, um, I, I get that fuzzy, warm, nostalgia feeling whenever I watch it. So it, it does bring back some fond memories. So, you know, it, it's still kind of fun to watch, and I'm still kind of still not that into it. <laughs> And since I, I was never 100% into it, I never owned any of the original Voltron toys. And uh, then, you know, I grew up into my teens in the 90s, and Voltron kind of faded out of my memory until, um, geez, I don't remember, maybe, maybe 1996, 97, I don't know exactly remember, but they had, uh, they tried to revive it with a, a Voltron in the third dimension, and that was just a bucket of fuck right there. It, it was an awful series. Uh, uh, it was gross. It really was gross. And, um, and then I think it was in 2012, maybe 2011, there was um, Voltron Force, which, um, you know, I, I kind of liked that Voltron, or at least the Voltron, the robot itself, I kind of liked that Voltron. The animation quality for that cartoon, like the cell shaded animation, was uh, kind of dodgy, but you know, it, it was okay. You know, I, I watched it. I just didn't love it, even though Voltron: Defender of the Universe, Voltron: in The Third Dimension, and Voltron: Force had vastly different styles and quality. They tried to contain it all into one universe. You, you, arguably, you could say they just didn't do a good job at it. But, you know, they made the attempt. Then, in 2016, Netflix and DreamWorks presented Voltron Legendary Defender. And this was a complete reboot of Voltron. And, uh, well, so far it's only it's only wrapped up its second season. I'm, I'm liking it. It's pretty good so far. However, I will say this. The opening theme song of Voltron Legendary Defender does kind of come off as generic and garbage, in my opinion. But, whatever. So, it doesn't have a theme song you can hum to. I I I'm still waiting for season three, you know, regardless. I'm still liking the show. But whatever. This is the Voltron for a new generation. So, let's get started. So, in order to kind of streamline this video a little bit, I'm going to kind of be reviewing these lions in pairs. The, the yellow and blue, and then the green and red, followed by black, followed by Voltron. Um, because, you know, both pairs of lions have uh, similarities, so it'll just make things a lot quicker, a lot easier, and um, it's my show and I feel like doing that. First up on the docket, we have the legendary class Yellow Lion. Now, there are different toy classes for the Voltron series. Some of these figures combine, um, like the yellow one here, and some of them are more like smaller deluxe class size, which are just more for the individual action play. Uh, which I find kind of silly because this guy does do an adequate job as a combiner and individual, you know, toy. The legendary class Yellow Lion was uh, the first one that I found in, uh, well, in December of 2016. I just kind of stumbled upon him at uh, Toys R Us, and you know, for seventeen dollars, I, I picked him up. You know, uh, seventeen dollars, uh, 
not not a bad price, I guess, for something of this size, especially since it did come with another weapon. It was a combiner, and it's individually an action figure. So, you know, I guess 17 was kind of acceptable, considering that Transformers of this size class are running for, like, $25. You know, um, it, by comparison, this, this was a no-brainer, clearly. But... When I picked up Yellow Lion, I realized the hunt was on. This was like Combiner Wars all over again, and I kind of liked that sensation. The Yellow Lion is piloted by the Paladin Hunk, and what a hunk of a robo-lion this thing really is. He is a superb beast. And yes, I did use that pronoun correctly, because if you haven't noticed, Yellow Lion here has a faux-armored mane, which kind of makes Yellow Lion the only male in the whole group. That's right, Yellow Lion has been gender-bended from a female to a male. Because if you really think about it, look back at all the original uh, Voltron figures, they, none of them had a, a main, a robo main, or anything considered a main, so that would have made all five of the Voltron lines female. This one, this one's a male. This is a main. It has to be. This is a big old armored chunk of awesome right here, but it also looks like a main. So I'm calling Yellow Lion the only male in the group. And also, here we have the Blue Lion. Yellow Lion, Blue Lion. You, you can see they are very, they have very similar body types. Both Yellow and Blue Lions both come with their pilots, Hunk and Vance, respectively. And they come in the depiction of tiny, soft plastic. Uh, they are supposed to be riding sky sleds. You know, the sky sleds to actually uh, uh, transport to uh, their respective lines. And it's kind of cool because down here, under the chest, it's a little docking ramp. It opens up. And the little, uh, the little pilot can actually lock right into there. There we go. And now, Hunk is inside the yellow line. Vance is exactly the same way. It's a slightly different sky sled than what Hunk's is. And again, it opens up in a docking ramp right here. And it just attaches, attaches, and closed shut. And now, Vance is inside the blue line. Now... If you take scale into account with the mini sky sled figure and the yellow lion, this thing is actually gargantuan. I mean, if, if I were to compare the yellow lion to um, kind of like a transformer, I think he would scale in well with the Legends class versions of Transformers like Optimus Prime and Shockwave. If you were to stand the, the Sky Sled next to Optimus, next to Shockwave, next to Yellow Lion, that's pretty close to my estimation of the scale that Yellow Lion must be in. And, you know, looking at that picture, think of how huge Voltron would be if Yellow Lion is dwarfing Optimus Prime. I mean, that's pretty damned huge. Yellow Lion figure replicates the style of the new animated series very well. The Yellow Lion looks heavily armored, and the foam mane covers the part of the head just looks really cool. It does limit the head movement of the Yellow Lion. It can only look up and down, but it kind of looks left and right, but not really. But, you know, it would look left and right a little bit more if it wasn't for the foam mane. What lion would be complete without its massive and powerful jaws. The yellow lion does have an opening jaw, except it is on a spring. So you open it, it closes. You open it, it closes. It's a, it's a pretty tight spring. I mean, you hear that clacking sound? That, that spring means business. So there is, there is no keeping the jaw open. There is a cool little detail in there. I guess it's like, you know, a weapon. Like, I, think that, I think they can shoot lasers out of their mouths, but... You know, it looks cool. It just, I, I, I kind of wish there wasn't a spring there. I would kind of like just to have it pose like, ah, you know, which would be awesome. Okay. It has a fairly decent range of motion for the paws. It has working shoulders. It has knees. It has paws. And the paws 
have these nice little claws on them. They're, they're soft plastic, so you can't really hurt yourself. But, you know, it, it's it's not bad, you know? It does have a good, you know, left and right range of motion. No ball joints on any of these limbs. But, I mean, you can pose the yellow lion so that's kind of stalking or something. You can move the head up and down, like I said. Left and right, not so much. And then, of course, the tail is soft plastic. It doesn't really pose. It pretty much just stays like that. There's no there's no wire or anything that would allow posing. Like, I can't just do that and, you know, it just stays kind of how it wants. It's soft plastic. That's all it is. But, you know, it, it does have a limited range of articulation, but it works at the same time. It doesn't need to have a whole heck of a lot, in my opinion. And it, this just works. Another added accessory to the Yellow Lion would be its weapon platform, which is a very large and awkward disc launcher. It attaches via a clip on both sides to the main. It, there we go, oh, there it locks in. And it just adds this extra huge, massive bulk to the yellow lion. It has about four uh, trans clearance uh, blue discs. It's a disc launcher. Little, little thing right here launches the discs. And it's, um, like I said, this thing is big, it's bulky, it doesn't look good, and it's just, it's kind of lame in my opinion. So Blue Line has a very similar body type to Yellow Line. It's actually the same body. You know, the same type of tail, same ratcheted legs, you know, paws. Everything from, um, everything from here, here, is the same mold. It does have this red piece right here, like on the, around the collar. Um, and it does have a different head sculpt. And I wouldn't count this as a mane. It doesn't, it doesn't look as prominent as a mane. So let's just say that Yellow Lion is probably the only stud in this pride. Now, Blue Lion also has a weapon mode. And it attaches on the sides, just above the spine. You know, attaches where, near the, where the ribs are. And... This weapon mode actually looks pretty cool. It looks like some kind of like a rail gun or something like that. And it does have a firing missile. Um, it's not... Okay, well, the firing missile is not staying. It's not... There we go. It's it locked in place. But um, it, it actually... This is a cooler weapon mode than uh, what Yellow Lion has sporting. But it's pretty cool. I like it. And let's move on. Now, on to the red and green lions. They are a bit smaller than yellow and blue. The, the red and green lions are less armored, but they are more kind of like spherical, smoother, um, more aerodynamic, I guess. Where yellow and blue is more for defense and brute force, red and green is more for speed and attack. Uh, essentially, though, we do have very similar, you know, legs, very similar, you know, paws and elbows and stuff. Um, the molding might be different from yellow and blue, but the mechanic is pretty much the same. Uh, same thing goes to the tail. It's still that soft plastic, and we also have a new head, except this head can kind of rotate this way, and it even has a waist articulation. It, this thing... This thing definitely has, you know, more articulation than yellow and blue. And again, with much like the jaws, you know, spring-loaded mouth, okay? And the, the sculpting looks really good. I really like the face sculpt on Red Lion here. Um, it's just, I like it. I mean, it it's kind of weird looking at it if you look through the mouth right there, you know, that, that big gap. But, you know, I mean, that's, that's there for another reason, which we will go into. Uh, much like yellow and blue, there is a sky sled, which uh, this one has Keith. And open up the chest. Locks into the chest and close. And now Keith is piloting the Red Lion. As far as accessories goes for the Red Lion, other than the sled, of course, we have uh, his weapon, which um, I forget what it's called, but it docks right there, right on the spine of the red line, and just this, you know, swiveling turret weapon, which it looks really cool. It, it looks as fast and aerodynamic as the red lion does, and I love it. It does have a firing missile, 
And that's it. It looks kind of awesome. Now, Red Lion does come with another accessory, which was kind of a bizarre choice on uh, Dreamwave's part. And that would be a section of the Blazing Sword. I, I, I don't know why the Blazing Sword came in two parts, but it did. I, I don't know. I don't get it, but you know, it also came with this. And there it is. So, Red Lion also converted into one of the arms, uh, the right arm of Voltron. Now, uh, let's move on to the Green Lion real quick, which will be very similar to what I just did with the Red Lion. Now on to the Green Lion. Green Lion has the same body type as Red, same hip and waist articulation, tail, arms and legs and elbows, has a different head sculpt, much wider jaw, you hear that? Uh, the head sculpt is different from red, and it's um kind of looks like kind of looks like Green Lion is grinning. This one <laughs> this one looks like he's grinning or something. He's got a doofy looking face on. Him. Now, as far as accessories goes, of course we have Pidge piloting uh, his. <laughs> I mean her um, Green Lion docks in the exact same manner. Open up the hatch. Put the sky sled right in there, and boom, there we go. Pidge is inside of her green lion. Now, for the other accessories, which um, green lion is, again, a, a, a little unique compared to the others, because green lion comes with this shield, which uh, is, I think is supposed to be back-mounted. I think in the normal cartoon series, it is present. And it actually looks pretty cool. It adds an extra bit of... Um, it adds that extra bit of uniqueness to the Green Lion, where it would just be a carbon copy, pretty much, of red if it was just like that. But I, I think that looks really good like that. It kind of looks like a, maybe a cape, or maybe underdeveloped wings, or something. But just it, it makes for a more interesting profile. And the, the, the shield itself does look pretty cool. I guess that's Voltron's new symbol. Instead of, like, the cross, that might be, I don't know. But I, I like it. Unless it looks like that, I, I don't really know. I think it's supposed to look like that. But that goes on the back. Now, there comes with two other accessories. So we take off the shield, and we place this little imposing thing right there at that beveled area, and it kind of fills that out, and we have the Fire Vine missile. And this is supposed to be like a plant type of like bioweapon that the Green Lion has. And it fully rotates, it fires, and I mean, heck, if you really wanted to, you could put the shield right there on the tailbone if you want to keep the shield, and, and look at that, that makes a very interesting profile for the green line, and it, you know, it looks really cool. I love it. I mean, I could even, I could even dare say that green lion is, might be my favorite out of the five. Now, there is one more accessory, and that would be the other half of the blazing sword. So, red lion came with this, green lion came with that, maybe vice versa. I don't remember which one came with which. But they both came with a half of it, so, you know, that goes like that, and then, you know, you know, the Blazing Sword, which we'll get back to later. So, moving on to Lion number five, the mighty Black Lion. The Black Lion, the leader of the Pride, the Matreon of the Voltron Force. Because, let's not, don't forget, no main means Black Lion is a female lion. Not that I'm complaining, I personally don't care. I'm just, you know, I, I I like to point out interesting trivia like that, okay? So, yeah, uh, Black Lion. Pretty darn cool. The Black Lion is certainly the biggest out of the bunch. Being in the torso section of Voltron, it kinda has to be. Uh, she's, uh, she, <laughs> for a female, she's very uh, broad-chested, very powerful looking. Um, she has these large, large front legs, and these kind of smaller, muscular legs. Actually, they're both kind of, uh, actually both legs are, are large and bulky in their own right. But I think with these large shoulder panels, this makes the front, gives the illusion of how much bigger it is. And of course, you know, we cannot forget these just large uh, red wings that are coming off of the Black Lion's back. I mean, she is more akin to a griffin than she is a lion. The wings are very dynamic. They have a broad range of motion. You know, it, it's um, it's awesome. What, what, what can I say? 
Black Lion, Black Lion is awesome. Now, it does have similar but not exact um, articulation. This is as far as the legs go, unless you count the knees. Pause. It can go back, but it can't go forward any more than that. The legs, very tight ratchets. We have thigh swivels, unlike the other lions. And again, paw and knee and all that stuff. The tail is a solid piece of plastic. That is... The tail is a solid piece of plastic. This is as curved... That's as, you know, that's as it's going to get. All right? Now, we even have the head. The head of the lion right here. Now, this is the only lion which does not have a um, spring-loaded jaw. It can open, it can close, and that's pretty much it. You know, it can... Black lion can look down, it can look straight ahead, and again, that's just about it. Now, black lion also has its own sky sled. This is uh, Shiro in the, the black sky sled. So, with this one, it docks differently than the other lions. Instead of the chest opening up, the belly area right here opens up on the side. Right here, put your finger in there, and it opens up on the side like that. And even the sled kind of fits in at an angle this time, and it locks in pretty firmly. It's all like a double hinge, and it just locks into place. Now, there's one other thing about the Black Lion, which the other lions do not have, and that is electronics. There is a switch right between the wings. If I switch it on, there's a button. I think you can see it. There's a button right there on the side of the waist area, and if I hit it, Thank you. Now, according to the box, uh, this thing sports about 50 sound effects. Uh, a percentage of the sound effects are, are kind of randomized uh, for the black line alone. We need to increase firepower. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be sound effects and Shiro giving orders and other things. But um, also, it does have added sound effects, which we will get to later. So, that is the black lion. And that is the red and green lion. And the blue and yellow lion. And now, there's only one other thing left to do. And that is... Form Voltron Force! stands at about 16 inches tall. He stands large and in charge. Looking at Voltron's surface detail, we see uh, an overall kind of aerodynamic and, and stylized design with a, a lot of smooth lines and, and hard, sharp-edged details with a lot of color with the silver and the gold and the blue and, of course, obviously the colored lines and the silver trim everywhere. Um, uh, this this Voltron really like just pops from a design point of view. This Voltron clearly stands out from the original blocky Defender of the Universe, with its big stompy lion boots to his like kind of bulbous lion arms and the lion cowl and well you know Voltron's lion theme. It's always been a lion theme, but <laughs> you know he he just he just stands so far apart from its predecessor. Uh, it's it's really, really just an awesome sight to behold. I mean, this is truly a Voltron for the 21st century. I mean, even with, like, the Gundam-style wings, you know? I mean, and, and it has uh, such a variety of possibilities for the wings. You know, you can either have it in a more relaxed, more epic, you know, 
pose like that. There's a lot of variations that what you could do with these wings. So the button on uh, the side of Voltron uh, has sometimes different sound effects when all the pieces are assembled. Just flick the switch again and... Uh, We're waiting on the yellow line. He says he's waiting for the yellow line, but the yellow line's clearly there, so I don't know. It's not perfect either. Let's try it again. What? We're still missing the blue line. You're not missing the blue line, stupid. He's right here. All right, well, clearly the electronics are not perfect on this figure because they are in... Sort of. Yeah, they're in, but... Lens. We're still missing the blue line. Look, we're waiting on the yellow line. Look, we're waiting on the yellow line. They're in. So it's supposed to have different sound effects and stuff, but for whatever reason, it's not working. Lens. We're still missing the blue line. So according to, according to Shiro... The yellow and blue lions have not been assembled yet. Um, Alright, let's mark off points for that. But you know what? I'm going to turn the damn thing off. It's supposed to have extra sound effects. It's supposed to have the extra characters chiming in like, you know, Pidge here! Let's do something! And Vance doing this and, you know, whatever. There's supposed to be other sound bites now that the lions have been assembled. For whatever reason, it's just not responding to the fact that the legs are installed. So, that's a damn shame. But, you know what? I didn't buy this thing for the sound bites. I bought this thing because it looks freaking awesome. This Voltron does have a fairly decent range of motion. He does uh, have a knee bend. And you hear those ratchet joints. Those things are tight. He has a thigh swivel. Let's mark off more points for that. That's not supposed to happen. Dude, unscripted. Unscripted. That's not supposed to happen. But yeah, we do have a thigh swivel. You know, this have a hip rotation, and it's still coming. This is actually getting annoying. I'm going off script here a little bit now, and um, I'm not too happy about that. So yeah, I mean, it does have some good hip rotation. Wow, yellow line's starting to come undone too. Um, when the legs are cooperating, he does have a good knee bend. He has a thigh swivel. He has a good hip, you know, movement. And for the lower body, that's pretty good. For the upper body, so we have a uh, shoulder movement rotation right here, right there at the at the armpit, and uh, he does kind of have an elbow bend, but it's limited. All right, it's a limited elbow. Okay, the shield coming off, that's not really a big complaint because I was kind of doing that and I wiggled it loose. Voltron, work with me here, buddy. All right, you're falling apart on me at the seams in front of everyone, okay? Stop it. Just stop it, okay? Please, I'm begging you. You're making me look bad, all right? You, you'll, you're looking bad, you're making me look bad, okay? All right, we practice this, we rehearse this, and, and now, like, the minute the camera's on, you're fucking things up, okay? Stop it. And also, of course, we do have the wrist, wrist swivel, and of course, the jaw still, you know, works, but again, it clamps shut. Um, the only real um, issue I have with the articulation is the head. The head only goes up and it looks straight ahead. Up and straight ahead. There is there is no head rotation. And I You're fucking up, man. There is no head rotation. And and that's that's really bad. That's not cool at all. I mean, it wouldn't have um it wouldn't have taken much to engineer a head rotation, and it really wouldn't have broken the bank on, on the price of the Black Lion, because it, the Black Lion is about $30 as compared to 17 with the others, but, you know, they should have added a neck rotation, and that's, that's kind of disappointing. So the one complaint I have about Voltron would be going back to the legs, unfortunately. Now, the fact that the... The fact that the legs are coming off really easily, I, I don't have an explanation for that. Like I said, not something I was prepared to be talking about, but I will talk about this. The heel spurs. If you notice, the heel spurs of Voltron are the, the, the front paws of yellow and blue. And they are on ratchet joints, but unfortunately, they tend to fall back like that, which you know obviously sets off Voltron's balance without a heel spur. They have to be down like that. And they just occasionally will just shift themselves up. Now, I can see this being problematic at some point in the future. You know, I have him on display. I have him on display on a low, um, on a low table, so in case he does decide he's going to fall one day, 
he won't have far to fall. But if you have this guy on display and your Voltron is having a similar problem, I wouldn't be too shocked if he just, you know, just, and then falls. You know, that, that's unfortunate. Maybe these ratchets could have been a little bit tighter. You know, um, so just beware of that. That's all. You know, you don't want this guy to drop and break. I mean, grand total, the total price of all these guys, I think, came to about $120. That's, that's a lot of money to just, you know, have bad heel spurs so he can't stand. All right? That's that's my my main complaint on Voltron. This is this issue is a secondary complaint. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that, unfortunately. As far as weapons go, Voltron is equipped with the Blazing Sword. Now, since this is a new Voltron for a new generation, we have a different type of weapon than that that tri-bladed like crown sword that the original Voltron had. And personally, I I still kind of want to see that sword. I want to see the, 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 the triple, like, um, trident kind of blade that Voltron came with. This this laser blade, I mean, it's kind of cool. Obviously, it's reminiscent of, like, you know, a lightsaber or something. And it, it does look cool. It's kind of like, you know, you know, the wave of the future. Oh! I don't know why I'm a ghost now. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, obviously futuristic. I guess it kind of fits in with the aesthetic. I just... I liked the older blazing sword as opposed to the laser sword. So, I mean, but yeah, I'm not really complaining. It's, it's nice. It's functional, you know. It's cool. Um, now, there is kind of a little added added thing to this that is not really on the instructions, and, you know, it's not really in the cartoon show, and that is this. Remember the added weapons that came with green and red? Well, you know, uh, those spots are still available, so I can attach this to the arm right here, to green. I can apply this one to red right here. Oh, and I launched the missile. Oh, well. And, uh, you know, now we got Voltron sporting some pretty mean Logan arm cannons. I mean, come on, man. For, fuck the blazing sword. I can just fire my missiles at you and then cut you to pieces afterwards. All right, so th this, is, this is a cool look. I, I'm digging... I'm digging Voltron with the arm cannons, okay? I'm, I'm liking this. This is, this, is, this is a good look for Voltron. In regards to Voltron, in order to disassemble him, um, now, unfortunately, we've already established how easy it is to remove these legs. They're not supposed to come off that easily. Okay? Turning to the back, there are two buttons behind the knees right here push the button, and then it's supposed to come right out. All right, for whatever reason, you know, it's a, uh, you know. The arms, on the other hand, are a different story. I'm gonna take the shield off. And I fell. Um, the arms are really, really in there. I mean, you saw that, right? You saw that pulling the arm, fucking leg comes off. Okay, you know what? We're gonna make things a lot easier for Jim Classic and take both legs off. I suppose, I suppose you could have Voltron do that. Okay, no, but taking these arms off is not easy. I actually had to uh, go onto YouTube and look for a tutorial, and um, I found a video from um, from Pew. You know, to Pew's toy reviews, or you know, I'm sure a lot of you know them. But um, this is this is what I learned. All right, now, I'll demonstrate with uh, this one because it'll be easier. So with the arm here, we rotate the arm up this way, and grab the arm, and literally use leverage physics. Just it pops right out very easily if you do it that way. And I'll even do it again with with the with this arm. Okay, I'm gonna switch hands here. So again, again. I cannot rip this out. I cannot re remove the arm this way. I'm I'm not really using all of my strength, but I'm using enough that it should work. So what I do is I raise the shoulder, and then I use physics to just pop it right out. And then and then we have a drawn and quartered Voltron. So yeah, Voltron, the legendary defender. He's really cool. Um, you know, I, I would say he is worth the money. Uh, just be aware of the heel spurs. And, you know, if you have them, awesome. If you don't have them, 
I would get him. This guy, he ain't your father's Voltron. I'm Jim Classic, and you've been watching Geekin' It. Epilogue. This is the final part of my review, and I cannot believe I am this stupid. Okay? I just discovered, I remembered why Voltron's legs kept falling off. They were on the wrong side. Now I can't pull them out. And I'm, in, I'm, I'm a liar. Or this toy made me a liar. No. But really, um, I think they're on, they're on the proper side now. They're not... Okay, well, Blue Lion is just a jerk. But no, I think they're on the... Yeah, because Yellow Lion is not coming off. Yellow Lion is way more sturdier. Now I push the button and he releases. Okay? So, apparently... That was my mistake the entire review. I had the wrong legs on Voltron. Blue Lion, still a bit of an anomaly. I mean, it's, I'm going to have to push the button, but... All right, so I guess in general, Blue Lion is just kind of loose on that peg there. But now the legs are a lot more sturdier. Got the thigh swivel. See, now nothing's falling off. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not reshooting it. That was my mistake. This is the epilogue. I'm fixing it, you know, I'm... Correcting myself right here, but yes. So this is Voltron with the correct leg configuration. I'm Jim Classic, and I'm a little dyslexic.